Well, good morning, everyone. I am Dennis Schmidt, the pastor of Dubuque Community Church, and the title of today's message is Romans Road. Uh, but when I start talking about Romans Road, you probably are thinking about the Roman Empire. It stretched clear across Europe all the way to modern Turkey, and, and they had influence all the way from Italy to India. That was a large area. And we're going to look at the slide today, to, and on that slide, to keep control of their far-flung empire, they built a vast network of roads so they could move their armies very quickly wherever they were needed. And uh, notice if, at, in our picture today, it starts out with a, a foundation layer right there at the front of the picture. Then each layer is built upon that with a little finer uh, rock and everything until they achieve the fi finished product on the top. And uh, you know that road, those roads were so well built that those roads still exist today, some couple thousand years later. Well, now after getting that picture in your mind, we're going to move from there and speak about another Romans road. It's, the, it's a series of verses in the book of Romans that are key verses that will lead us, uh, can accurately communicate the outline for re receiving biblical salvation, to save people's lives to give them the free gift of eternal life and it's a wonderful key to kind of do that so we're going to do that today and that's why i want to encourage you if you have a bible to get that bible out uh, otherwise get a piece of paper or a pen and we want i want to encourage you to write these th these verses down that we're going to be discussing today and it's a wonderful way and uh there's two reasons for, for me to give you this message today. The first message is to, you should list care, listen carefully because, um, so that you can look to see, have I truly fulfilled all the different steps in, in, in uh, this Romans road so that I can know that I, I myself, I am saved and on my way to heaven. Uh, we don't want to wait. You don't want to wait until after you leave this life and realize I've come up short. Uh, so for, for you, for you personally. Then the second reason is if you know you have followed these biblical guidelines and you do have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then it is important that you can accurately uh, communicate this important information to your loved ones around you and your other acquaintances so that they are prepared for eternity. So with that, we're going to go to our first verse today. And it's, the first verse is Romans 3.23. So open up your Bibles to Romans 3.23. And either that or write it down. And uh, so that's where our verses, first verse is going to be to start building our Romans road today, that foundation for, that, for, that, uh, for the uh, road. Well, Romans 3.23, go to your Bible there, and it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, when it says all... And I know this is redundant, but all means all, and it means everybody. So every one of us have sinned, yeah, we've broken God's holy laws, and we've fallen short of God's uh, command for us. You know, if God told us that for salvation, you have to swim from the west coast of California all the way to Hawaii, uh, some people uh, would get a little further out than others, but no one would ever make it. Well, to enter the kingdom of God, and this is hard for sinful man to understand, but if you knew how holy God was, you would understand how holy he is, and he dwells in heaven, and he cannot allow anything unholy to be there, and that's why we all fall short of the glory of God. And you know, this is probably one of the important you can't go to step two or step three until you really get step one in your heart it's just like those base stones if you remember in the picture the very bottom ones the ones right up front and the reason this one is so critical you can't go to two or three until after you really get established with step one 
because until you know that right now that without Jesus' intervention in your life that you're on your way to hell, you're never going to want to go through the other steps. So if you think you're already okay, what reason would you have to go to the other steps? And you know, one of the real quick ways to help us to all see uh, that we do need Jesus Christ, a free gift of salvation, is for us to just think briefly about the Ten Commandments. If you know them, you know that you're supposed to put the Lord your God first in every area of your life. And really, we don't do that. Uh, we, we try to, but we don't do that. And uh, have you ever used God's name in an incorrect manner? Have you ever taken anything that was not yours? Did you ever tell any kind of lie, including what we call a white lie, a little one? Have you ever looked lustfully upon someone else? You know, all of these things, or did you ever want something that belonged to somebody else very strongly? All of these are different parts that lets us know that we're not as perfect as we think we are. And then when you put on top of this James 2.10, which is not on the screen, it says, whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point is guilty of breaking them all. So I think we, we, we can help us to see that it only takes one sin to disqualify us from heaven. So that should help us to all know we definitely all have sinned. We have all definitely fallen short of the glory of God. Well, if you do have your Bible, next to verse 323, you want to write down 623 so you know where to go to next, because that's our next verse. So here we are in Romans 623, and it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So when you sin, there's a wage that you earn and it's called death. It's an eternal separation from Almighty God. Uh, that, that qualifies you to spend eternity in hell. And that's why it says death, eternal separation from God. But I love that, that word there. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it's a gift. And we're going to see this a little bit later again. You can never earn eternal life. That's a very important point to remember as well. Eternal life is, you know, we're all going to spend eternity somewhere. You're either going to spend eternity with God or in a place called heaven, or you're going to spend eternity in a place where the devil and his angels are in a place called hell. So you want to make sure that you have this eternal life that comes only through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ came as a perfect human being. He never sinned, and uh, he died for our sins. Well, now next to 623, you want to write Romans 5.8, or if you're just keeping track, it's Romans 5.8. Just, just need to write down that one verse. But what we want to do is just look at a couple points before we go to the next verse. So we're going to look at a couple verses before it. And uh, so here it is, Romans. So we're going to start in verse 6. But the main one we're going to be looking at is 8, and that's the one you want to know. Romans 5, 6 through 8 says, You see that at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Well, the Bible tells us uh, uh, that while we were powerless, when you are, the Bible calls us or says we're spiritually dead. You know, once in a while I see a poor dead squirrel laying on the road. He's dead. He keeps getting run over by cars and trucks and all that. He's dead, so he can't do anything about it. The Bible tells us while we are in sin, we are, before Christ came into our life, we are dead in sin. We couldn't do anything to help ourselves. And you know it says died for the ungodly, and that might sound like some really terrible people out there. No, that's really anybody who's living as if they have no God in their life. And you know what? All of us have lived that way at one point in our life. Maybe some more than others, but we're, we're all on that list. 
And then it goes on in the next verse, there's seven, where it says, Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. You got, well, very once in a while you hear about some person in a, in a great act of valor who sacrifices their life for a fellow soldier or another family member or not, something, but it's, it's not often. And, uh, and it says, when do this for a righteous person or a good person, would they dare to die? Would they dare to give up their own precious life to rescue another? But this now is where we get to the main verse. Nor normally that doesn't happen, but l look at this. But verse 8, but God, oh, praise God, what a wonderful, loving Father we have. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Well, God demonstrates it. He makes it evident by his action. You know, some people, they'll say, I love you, I love you, I love you. But then if, if anything happens, you can't expect them to help you with anything. But, uh, but when somebody comes and, you know, when people move to a new house and people that show up, I always say, those are the people that really love you. But, and God really demonstrated his own love for us. By the way, his love for us. Sometimes we think we have to learn how to love God. Well, it's not that hard because you know what? When, once you understand that God loves you, it's not so hard to learn to love God. Uh, it's pretty natural for us to love those who love, uh, who love, to love them who love us. And God does love us. And he proved it to us because while we were still sinners, while we we're in the very rebellion uh, of sin against the holy God, Jesus Christ came and died for us. God's own perfect son, the Messiah, laid down his life for our sins. Not for his, but for our sins. Well, we're going to keep moving on down the Romans road. And uh, uh, next to Romans 5.8, I'd ask you to write in Romans 10.9. And, you know, this is going to show us uh, how this payment, how, how can God just forgive us? Uh, and how, what do we got to do to, to receive this wonderful gift so that we make sure that we have it? And every one of these verses are important, I can assure you. Romans 10, 9 through 11, and uh, we're going to start. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, to confess with your mouth means to say what God says about two very important issues. One, your sin and your need of a Savior. And then to say that Jesus is Lord. He's Almighty God in flesh. It is not enough for you to say that Jesus was a wise man or a great teacher or even to say he was a great prophet, you have to understand what the angels said as we just celebrated Christmas, glory to God in the highest and to Jesus Christ the Lord. They said he's the Lord. He is God incarnate. And then you just can't say this kind of, well, I can, I'll just kind of mumble this prayer and everything will be. No, you need to really have this, have full acceptance of this in your innermost heart. And here's another point that's really important. And some churches are getting away from this to say that Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day. Well, when we get to the springtime of the year and we talk about the resurrection of Jesus, we see that Jesus over and over and over again appeared to the disciples to make it absolutely clear to them that he, it was him and that he had res, re, uh, resurrected from the dead because it's absolutely critical that we understand this. This again is a very important, this is not an option, this is a very important piece to understand and know that Jesus Christ, being God, I guess shouldn't make it seem so impossible that the he rose from the dead after his crucifixion. And then it says, when you really say that and you believe that and you understand that, then you 
will be saved. You will be rescued from the penalty that will come upon those who never receive God's forgiveness through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it kind of, the word continues to kind of explain it a little bit to us. And it, why, why do we have to do all that? Well, for it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. You know, with our heart, cardia, you know, you get a cardiogram when they check your heart. It's our, where our innermost being is. It's where we, uh, you know, uh, the Bible says that before uh, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit starts working in your heart, all, all that comes out of a man's heart is wickedness. But after the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life, you begin to believe, to accept as true what God's holy word the Bible says. By the way, all of this is God's holy word the Bible, and that's why we can believe it. And then it says, believe it, and then you are justified. And that's a wonderful word there. You know, it just, it, 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 you're justified. It means to be completely pardoned for all your sins. So it isn't like God pretends you didn't sin. He knows you did sin, but because you put your faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and because sin is against him, he says, you're pardoned. You've, you've uh, followed the remedy that I've given you to accept my son, Jesus, and then you become completely pardoned, completely free from the results of your sin. And you know, when you speak it, it's how you make it personal to you. And, and that's why it's so important. And you say, voluntarily, you say what God says uh, about, his, uh, about his son. And then, you know, it says you're saved. And that's when the cementing of the great transaction comes into your life. Jesus taking your sins and you receiving Jesus' perfect righteousness. Boy, what a transaction. What a gift it is for us. Well, if you do your part, God has promised to do uh, the next thing, that, the very next verse there, that's verse 11, and it says, As the scripture says, by the way, God who cannot lie, it's his word written down for us, his promise to us, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Everybody who trusts in the death, resurrection of Jesus Christ God's remedy for sin will never be ashamed, never put to shame. There's no way they're going to say that was a mistake. I, you know, that didn't work for me. No. By the way, Acts 4:12, which if you got a little space by your number there, you can write in Acts 4:12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. It's by the wonderful name of Jesus. Well, after 10, 9, uh, we're going to leave Romans Road a little bit, but we're still kind of finishing up. And there's another verse called, uh, it's Ephesians 2, 8. So you write Ephesians 2, 8 right after 10, 9. And as we go there, what we're going to do is look at a, some information, a very important question What's God doing all this for? Why? What, what's his end game? What's he trying to show to us? And, there, and, and we're going to start in 2.7 there, but the main verse, uh, again, is, is 8. But in 2.7 there, it says that in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Well, that in the coming ages, the ages that we're in right now, God could clearly show the fact of his incomparable, unrivaled, unparalleled, unequal. There is no one else who pours out the treasures of his grace on us like God. And you know what? At the cross of Jesus Christ, when he died as God's son for us, Nowhere in all the Bible is it so clearly shown God's great, perfect, unparable, unpar par <laughs> unparalleled love for his children. So it goes on to say, For it is by grace that you have been saved 
through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Well, that's the verse, we, the main key verse that we want to look at here. And by the way, the main point of that is it's not what you've done. You, it's by, through faith. And by the way, it says not, not by work so that no one can boast. Uh, it's not from yourselves. It is a pure gift from God. And you know what the beautiful thing about that is? Is because it's all a pure gift from God. None of us, when we get to heaven, will be patting ourselves on the back. We'll all be pointing to the Lord and saying, it was you, it was you, it was you. None of us will be boasting. All the glory and credit all goes to Almighty God where it should go. Well, the very next verse brings us even more clarity on this. And it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. And that word uh, workmanship there in the Greek is poi uh, poema, which where we get the word poem. You know, if you take a poem, you take a blank piece of paper, you start writing out a poem, and it's something, it's your creation, and you create it to be what you want it to be. God has created us all for good works. God directed labor for the good of others, prepared in advance for us to do. Here's something I found later in my life after accepting Jesus Christ. You will never feel fulfilled in what you're doing until you know what God created you to do and you're doing what he created you to do. Then you will feel so fulfilled. This is part of the reason I believe that suicide is on the increase at on all ages. As we get further from the truth of the gospel, as people get further away and don't even understand what God's will for them is, uh, many have tried all that the world promised would, would make them happy and make them successful, but they were not doing, and this is important, what God created them to do. I want you to think about that, to think about what has God created me to do, what would I know today is something God has given me to do, and then start doing it. And uh, here's an excerpt from the New York Times article. I think that really shows this, what I'm talking about. It said, her beauty was recognized when she became the winner of the 2017 Miss North Carolina USA pageant. And then she, the winner of the 2019 Miss USA pageant. But there was more. She was a high school track star, an attorney with an MBA, Master in Business Associate Administration, and an Emmy-nominated correspondent for the TV program Extra. So to many, her death by suicide, she's 30 years old after accomplishing all these things, she commits suicide at the age of 30 when she jumped from the balcony of her penthouse. It was all met with great disbelief because they said, hey, she should be so happy. Look at she's doing all the things that the world says makes you happy and successful. But you know, only God can give you the joy of the Lord. Well, we're going to finish up in 2 Peter here. If you want to write 2 Peter 3, 9 here to, to understand one final thing, one final verse. And that's where it says in 2 Peter, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Well, it's really important that we understand that God wants us to, uh, to repent. He does not want anyone to perish. He wants us all to be in heaven with him even more than we want to be there. You know, and this is important. Uh, we can either say to God, thy will be done in my life and surrender ourselves to the Lordship of Christ and receive the free gift of eternal life. Or we can foolishly say, my will be done. I want to do it my way. And here's what's unfortunate. The, the Lord will answer, Okay, I created you and gave you the free gift of eternal life. 
I now accept your decision and now be eternally separated from me in a place where everyone who rejects God's direction for their life will end up. It's called hell. You don't want to end up there. So here we are. Here we are all the way back around to uh, where we started. And remember in the beginning I told you the two main reasons that I wanted you to listen carefully to the message today and to make sure that you got all the different pieces. Just think if they'd have missed any one of those steps there, that road would still not be there here 2,000 years later. So I hope if you, the first step is that you've checked to make sure that you have followed God's plan. And then if you have followed God's plan, I do pray that you are now able to talk to someone else about making sure they know the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, every part of that road was important, and so I want to make sure that you understand that, <clears throat> that every piece of that is so important. Well, as we finish up here today, I just want to encourage you, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you have never confessed Him as your Lord, that you would pray some simple prayer today, that you would say, Lord Jesus, I admit to you now because of my foolish pride and desire to do things my way, my life has almost been destroyed. I now realize that I am a sinner and I do deserve punishment for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me now and give me the free gift of eternal life. I believe you died and rose from the tomb on the third day. And I do believe you are God in flesh. Please forgive me now. I accept you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we're finishing out today, I just want to thank you for, for listening to these messages. I hope you've written them all down. I hope that you're going to use them in the days ahead. Uh, when you get around other people and you want people that you love to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to sit there, but all you need to do is know that outline. We're sinners. God's made a way out of it for us. If we put our faith in him, we do not have to fear. We'll have the free gift of eternal life. Uh, and you can transmit that and communicate that to people around you after you, first of all, have done it for yourself. And then you will be on that solid road, that Romans road to eternal life. Well, God bless you today and always in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen.